Okay, so I'm just kind of defining this very edge because we've got a bit of a light spot, a light area in there. When you look at the photograph, you can see what I mean on the photo. Just here, like just with that bit of cross, so you can just see the photo a bit easier. I can just enlarge it a little bit for you. And then that comes to here. I know we've got a bit of highlight in there, but we will add that in as we go along. It's all about taking your time. There's no rush. Certainly no rush at all. And allowing time within your day to sit and paint and relax. Right, the first thing I want to do on the highlight is, believe it or not, put some white across the middle. <laughs> when you look at the photo, you can see there's a bit of a line here. I'm going to put a small line there initially. And then there's a bit of a line probably about nearly three quarters of the way through the eye there. In line with that line sort of thing, okay? Got that? And we'll probably highlight this area here a little bit more as well. And I'm going to wash the brush out. There's a reason behind, behind uh, this as well, is that I can then soften this line down with a clean, damp brush. Even though this brush is splitting a little bit already. Bristles are starting to part company. It does happen there. Just to there. Let's get some on the brush. A bit more pull. Now, right. Now, I'm going to start off here and just put a line in there initially. We're going to blend that line. And then, again, the same underneath the bottom part of the beak. Um, we could blend that if need be. And you know where we've got the um, the edge of the top part of the beak, or the top, the upper mandible? Oh, it's too technical. I'm going to put a little dotty little line Barely, just lightly tap in the paper, that's all I'm doing. Pull that there. And it helps define it, because it's there, it is there on the photograph, isn't it? But, again, if the more you look at the photograph, the more you'll see. If you find that it's too much, we can come back in. In fact, I'm not happy with that big blotch of white there, but that's what's on the photo, but I'm still not happy with that. So I'm going to come in with that blacky blue colour and just touch over in place, just to break it down a little bit, break it up. Now these lines are kind of varying the direction as I go along. I know it's all the same across, which it is. You've got the lighter layer underneath, which you can still see. And you've got the darker layer on the top. But we will be going over this, as I said earlier on, with watercolour white. And that will pick out and start to shape this area when we do that. So I wouldn't worry too much about the shape to that degree around the head at least. Because we will be kind of creating that lighter area as we go along. Right, so all I'm doing, I'm increasing the depth of the colour, just putting lots more lines where it gets darker, putting them closer together. I don't want to fill everything in though, I, don't, I might as well just get a big brush and just blank it all in. I want to create texture, and by doing that, we're just going over and over again for the dark areas, allowing space for these little feathers to come through. Alright, so I want to do... A few more dark marks in here, not too many because it's getting slightly lighter as you come around there. And these are darker here as well. Start bringing some around. Got some darker ones around there. Just the very dark areas, don't cover it all up. And it's dark in there, but not completely. I'm just going to put a few lines in there. So I want to leave some of the lines and some of the colour in between. And I'm just grazing that paper, just to put a few into there as well, just a few. So back to the front, and I can put a little bit more on here now it's dried. I want to try and show some roundness in there, and I can't do that until it dries. And above the eye, there's a section just here as you can see, it's a bit wider than that, about like that. Sort of, ish, about like that, no? Yeah. Yes, pull. And then we'll put some whites in there, just above, a bit like an eyebrow. Above the uh, the eye stripe or the supercilium. <laughs> you know, technical now. And then down the side of the eye stripe as well. So pull a few into there. We'll need to go darker in here, yeah. Well, left and right, this, this actually doing the branch doesn't take too long, believe it or not. 
because you don't have to be so precise with it. It's not like when we're painting the bird or painting a cat or a dog or any other animal where you've got to be quite precise with all the highlights and the eyes and so forth. In this case, you can be quite loose when you start getting the detail on. You know, literally, that's all I'm doing, just shaking my hand as I'm going through. Just going around the outside. Try not to rub it too much because it'll just make everything underneath blend in. And then a little bit more around there because obviously this is now hovering over the top there. So we've got a bit of a shadow coming off there. See that looks better now, it's kind of anchored down isn't it? We'll look at all the darker darks now. The darkest darks. Which is around underneath the claw or the foot. Just underneath. From the very edge of somewhere like that. Where it kind of catches that light. Not in the shadow though, remember that? And then that really is about it. Well, thank you very much for following another one of my watercolour tutorials out of this beautiful looking nuthatch. And we'll see you again for the next one that we do. And if you have any problems, any queries or any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Okay, so let's see what we do next time round and uh, I'll see you then. Bye bye for now. Hi there, well thank you for watching one of my little videos. And if you want to see anything else, I've got more on here as well. But also, if you have a look at my Patreon channel just there, look. Okay, that's the one. Yeah, got it. Um, I'm showing people how to paint step by step and using watercolour. So this is using um, all the finest of details for wildlife in general. So if you want to learn how to paint wildlife in watercolour, then come along and join me on Patreon. So thank you for coming along, and uh, above all, get painting. Bye bye for now.